Hello everybody, uh, I'm Chef Ben, this is Dinner with Ben, episode 20, brought to you by Ashworks Cutting Boards and T-North Carbonated Iced Tea, and this evening we'll be making Christmas hors d'oeuvres. I'm very excited for this and I hope you are too. Hello Sue, hello Cass, hello Barbara, nice to see you all. Uh, we're just going to give it a few minutes um, and then we will jump right in. What has happened? Okay. Oh, I'm messing up my computer. Fantastic. So like I said, we're making hors d'oeuvres. Today we're going to make um, an onion and gruyere tart. We're going to make cheese pommiers, uh, spinach and artichoke dip, and sesame smoked salmon on one on sesame crackers, one time crackers. Um, yeah. Hi Barb. Hello, 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 hello. Hello Bob. Hello everybody. So, uh, like I said, we're just going to give it a minute or two. If anybody has any questions about what we're making, let me know. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to explain what a pommier is. So, uh, pommier is traditionally a sweet. Um, and all you really do is take puff pastry and you roll them together. And it kind of looks like an ear. And they're known as ears, elephant ears, um, glasses. They're known as, uh, uh, as all kinds of things. But they're very common. Uh, European desserts, but we're going to make a savory one, which is a fantastic uh, hors d'oeuvre and very easy to make. So I'm excited to show you. Uh, and that's the first thing we're going to make, uh, but we got to get a few things done first. So first and foremost, we have to get our balsamic reduction going and we have to get our onions going because the onions are going to take a while. So we'll do the onions first, and then we'll jump right into the balsamic reduction. Before we do anything, we got to preheat the oven. So I'm going to turn the oven on to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and let it heat up. Okay, next step, onions. So we're going to caramelize some onions. Hello, Steve. Uh, I have you know, six, five or six onions here. I have five, uh, three bigger ones and two smaller ones. So all we're going to do is cut the top and the bottom off and then cut the onion in half. So I know that when we dice onions we don't cut the bottom off but for this we're going to and you'll see why. And the reason why we're not peeling the onions first is because after they're cut it's much easier to peel them. And then just right down the middle. So to caramelize onions all we're going to do is cook them for a long time on low heat. And what we're doing is drawing out the natural sugars and the onions and turning them to caramel. So if you guys saw the uh, French onion soup post, uh, hello Sue, hey Steve. If you saw the French onion soup post I did uh, a couple days ago, that's just, it's caramelized onions. But I did a lot of them, so it took a really, really long time. These ones are only going to take about half an hour. So we've got to get them on right away. And these onions are pretty potent, so if I start crying, it's not because I'm sad. It's because these are really strong onions. Oh my god. Ooh. Okay. So in the fall, in early winter, the onions are stronger than they are in the spring. Uh, the reason being that in the spring, all these harsh chemicals that are burning my eyes and my sinuses right now turn to sugars. And that's what the plant uses to push the greens up out of the soil. So as they sit through the winter, um, naturally onions like are designed to tend to, or not designed, but naturally onions would sit underground during the winter and just kind of lay dormant. And then as the spring comes, they would push the greens up, start grabbing sunlight and then grow. So it's the, those harsh chemicals that burn your eyes are what turn to the sugars that feed the greens and allow the plant to grow before it hits the sun. So, in the, as they sit through the winter, these harsh chemicals all kind of mellow out. And that's why you may notice in the spring cutting onions is not nearly as bad as it is in the fall and early winter. So, just get the board cleaned up here. I'm not just throwing these on my floor, I have a compost bucket down there. So what we're going to do really quickly is chop these, we're going to slice these really thin. So the trick is, hold the knife just like we always do, 
thumb and forefinger, fingers wrapped around, fingers curled back on the onion, and we're just going to rock the onion. I'm not picking it up. We're just gonna go, okay? So I'm just gliding the knife, and I'm not chopping down. If you chop down, you're gonna spray more of those juices everywhere. Essentially, I'm just pulling the knife. So the knife is kind of going like this, right? Like I always imagine the wheels on a train, and they have that, like on the engine, they have that metal bar that goes with the wheels. That's what I imagine the knife doing. So I'm not chopping, I'm slicing through. And that'll shoot way less onion juice into the air and make it a lot easier to breathe and not fry. Hello, Debbie. So I'm just gonna get through these pretty quick. And this may seem like a lot of onions, but once these cook down, it's not really gonna be that much. Really, really potent. Oh my god. After I made that French onion soup a few days ago, it smelled like onions for like four days. This isn't going to be that bad, but I really did. Everywhere I went, it just smelled like onions. So I'm just, uh, just because I'm running out of space on my board here, I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to my pan. I'm going to turn the pan onto three, so like medium low, and I'm going to add the onions into the pan. We don't have to wait for the pan to heat up like we would if we were sauteing these, because this is a slow process, so it's okay to, to put them in a cold pan. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to pile it right up. And the, the trick here is just to keep stirring them every once in a while. Um, if you don't stir them, they're going to stick to the bottom of the pan, they're going to burn, and that's not what you want. You definitely don't want to spend a bunch of time doing this and then burn all your onions or get that burnt flavor. Sorry, my nose is running down and everything. So I'm just going to finish these. I I would buy lots of onions from these too. I'd go through a lot of onions. I don't think I need a bigger board. I think I just need less onions. Okay, we're almost through. We're almost through with the onions. Debbie, we are making uh, four different hors d'oeuvres. So the idea here is that you know Christmas is coming up, so people are going to be entertaining. So we're making a caramelized onion and gruyere tart, which is what we're doing right now. We're making uh, cheese pommiers. Uh, we're making... I have it written down. I don't know why I'm guessing. Spinach and artichoke dip. And we're doing smoked salmon uh, with like sesame and soy and ginger on sesame crackers. Okay, Ruby, I'm sorry that your internet's not working very well. So, I'm just going to wipe off my board here. And then we're going to do the pommiers. So, with puff pastry, when you're working with it, you want it to be pretty cold. Um, the reason being, you don't want the... So, puff pastry, if you don't know, is pastry that's layered with butter, essentially. So it's like a croissant, except croissants have yeast in them. So puff pastry is pretty much the exact same thing without the yeast. Um, and if it gets too warm, the butter melts and it won't puff up properly. So when you're working with it, you want it to be cold. So I have mine out of the fridge, so I want to work with it pretty quickly here. So we have puff pastry. This is just store-bought stuff. I'm not going to make uh, I'm not going to make puff pastry, it's a giant pain in the ass, so we just buy it. Okay, so we're just going to open this up. We're not going to roll it at all. We're just going to open it up and spread it out a little bit. Okay. Now. A little bowl, we're gonna break an egg into it. Just whisk this up. Now, 
now. If you have a pastry brush, you can use a pastry brush for this, I can't find mine. This fancy pastry, it is in the grocery store. Um, usually in the frozen food section, there will be a little area that has uh, puff pastry, phyllo pastry, um, tart shells, stuff like that. That's where you'll find it. In every grocery store will have it. So we just want to completely coat this. Not too much, just enough. And again, if you have a pastry brush, use that. But I think mine's packed away. Okay. Next step, cheese. So we're going to use two different kinds of cheese for this. The first one we're going to use, this is uh, cow's two years old cheddar. It's incredible. Um, so delicious. So we're just going to grate this over. The whole thing, if you have a bigger grater, don't worry about it, like that's fine. I just prefer the smaller ones. So we're just gonna grate this over. You want a nice coating on here. You don't want to skimp on the cheese. Okay, so we'll get all that out of there. So cheddar, and then we're gonna go with some parm as well. Same thing, a nice coating. Okay. Now we're going to add pepper. Oh, pepper's over there. So a little bit of salt. Excuse me. And a little bit of pepper. Now we're going to take a little bit of time. Just sprinkle this right over. Sue, did you say that the puff pastry is with the no bake cookies? Sue, Sue, Sue. I'm just buying you. I don't mind. I don't care. If people use that stuff once in a while, that's okay. So we don't want a ton of thyme in here, just a little tiny bit for flavor, and a little will go a long way. So, because we really want like really subtle flavors in this, so we're just gonna pull a little bit more. Let's do one more of these guys. There's no need to worry about chopping this; just pull the leaves right off the stem, pop them down. Done. The only other step is to roll it. So what we're going to do, roll it once there. Roll it once there. And again, the idea is that we want these to meet in the middle. Just like that. So now all we're going to do is wrap this up and put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes. Okay. Now the only other step with that is to slice it and bake it. Debbie said that I'm really taking my time. It's very funny. The, excuse me for a second, I'm going to blow my nose because the onions got my nose all runny and I feel like you don't want to hear me sniffle all night.
Okay, that's better. Um, actually, Debbie says that I'm really taking my time, and that brings up a very good point, Debbie. So, I know that some of you really like cooking along, but that sometimes I go a little fast, and it's really hard for me to gauge what's going on at home versus what I'm doing here. So in the new year, uh, I'm going to start bringing on a few more guests, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to cook. I'm going to get them to cook. So I'll walk them through the whole process, and hopefully that will slow the show down a little bit to the point where it's, it's easier and more comfortable for you guys to cook along at home, because that's the whole idea, right? Like I want you guys to cook along. So if bringing more guests on and teaching them how to cook will help you guys, then you know, we'll do that. So that's, thank you for bringing that up, Debbie. I appreciate that. I really do. Okay, next step. What are we going to do? We're going to do our balsamic reduction. So I just have a little pot here. Whoa! That's the vent. That was on the vent for the oven. It got very hot. Don't touch the bottom of pots because you never know how hot they're going to be. So here we have balsamic reduction. No, we don't. We have balsamic vinegar. Uh, about a cup of it. Half a cup, I think. About half a cup. I'm just going to dump this right in here. So the reason why we're making a balsamic reduction, and the reason why any chef makes a balsamic reduction, is to mimic aged balsamic. So balsamic vinegar, this stuff is... Yeah, it doesn't say. Uh, balsamic vinegar is aged um, in barrels. And the longer it's aged, the sweeter and the thicker it gets. So we kind of mimic that, right? Because that's a, like, you can get balsamic vinegar that's aged 50 years and it's really, really expensive. So, hello, Ella, how are you? So, hello, Danielle. So we don't want to pay a pile of money for really expensive vinegar. So instead, what we do is take some vinegar, we add some sugar to it. We're gonna add about half a cup of sugar. And we're gonna cook them. And it's gonna get nice and thick, and it's gonna get nice and sweet, and it's gonna taste very, very similar to really good quality aged balsamic vinegar. So that's why when you go to restaurants and you see balsamic reduction, that's why it's balsamic reduction instead of aged balsamic. It's because it's way cheaper to do this than to buy the actual aged balsamic. Hello, Laura. Okay, so we have the onions on. I'm going to give them a stir. With a nice pair of tongs here. Make a mess, it's okay. So you don't need to like stand here and stir them like every two minutes, but every time you, you know you kind of think about it, you want to stir it. So like every minimum every ten minutes or so, you want to give this a little stir. And I'm just going to set these aside, and then we're going to work on our artichoke dip. So, hello, cat. So the first step with the artichoke dip, it's a spinach artichoke dip. So we need to make some spinach, and I'm going to put this. Other puff pastry, this is for the onion tart. I'm going to put this in the fridge for a few minutes until we're ready to use it. If you're wondering what that banging is, I have a light in front of my fridge so it doesn't look dark in here. And every time I go to the fridge, I have to move it. Uh, okay, so spinach artichoke dip. First thing we need to do is cook the spinach down. So we're just going to take a regular frying pan, you can use a pot as well. And we're going to put it over kind of medium heat, and we're going to get it nice and hot. It's very important, very important that the pan is nice and hot, because we want the spinach, excuse me, hey guys, hello Miss Juanita, hello Wendy, how are you? So when the spinach hits the pot or the pan, we want it hot enough that the moisture evaporates from the spinach. We don't want it to pool in the pan. So we don't want steamed spinach, we want sauteed spinach, we want wilted spinach. So ideally, this is gonna take 10, 15 seconds once we get everything in the pan. So we're just gonna let it get nice and hot, and then we will throw the spinach in with a little tiny bit of oil. We'll cook it, stir it around, 
literally for like 15, 20 seconds maximum. Okay, maybe a little, maybe like 45 seconds. Uh, then we're going to put some paper towel down on this plate and we'll drain off any excess moisture. There will still be moisture that comes out of it, but our goal is to limit that as much as possible. Thank you, Miss Juanita. I appreciate that. So, once this gets nice and hot, we'll get going. In the meantime, we're going to drain the artichokes. So canned artichokes, as Sue can attest to, are much easier to use than fresh artichokes. Um, fresh artichokes are a giant pain in the ass, if I'm being honest. So we're using canned artichokes, and that's okay. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab a bowl, and we're just going to drain it. So for, for a very long time, I didn't like artichokes very much. Um, a couple years ago, my wife and I went to Portugal, and we were in the airport coming on our way back. We were, uh, where were we? We were in the airport in Lisbon waiting for our flight, and I was really hungry. We were both kind of cranky. Uh, we both just needed to eat. So I, gra I grabbed a sandwich at the airport. And I started eating and she like she had like left me and like was wandering in the airport she was mad at me and I was mad at her. Anyway, so I'm eating the sandwich, just waiting for our flight, waiting to get on the plane. And she comes and she's like, What are you eating? I was like, this sandwich is like chicken and artichokes. And she's like, that's supposed to be lettuce. It was really, really rotten lettuce that I thought was artichokes, because it was this color and texture. So that really turned me off artichokes for a long, long time. Uh, I don't mind them so much now, but it took me a while to, to get used to them again. Okay, my pan is literally smoking. So we're going to put just a tablespoon of olive oil in there. And it's spinning. And it's going to pop. It's going to spit it out a little bit. That's okay. So we'll give that a second. We'll put some paper towel down. Which got wet, that's okay. So as you can see, there's no liquid pooling in the pan. That's what we want. If there's liquid pooling, our pan wasn't hot enough. Okay, spin it down. Done. So now we're just going to let that cool and drain a little bit. And we'll give our onions another stir. So, these you can already see some of the bottom ones are starting to caramelize a little bit um, and they're already starting to cook down. There's a lot of moisture coming out of them. It's perfect. It's exactly what we want. And we're not seasoning the onions yet because if we put salt in there, it's going to pull more moisture out of the onions. So we want to wait. We don't want to add salt until a little bit later on. Hello, Carol. Hello, Donna. Hello, hello, hello. What's the question? So, Wendy, I can't see your question. Uh, I'm sorry, Wendy, are you talking about marinated artichokes? Um, you can use them, but it's going to be a really strong flavor, which you might not want in this dip. But that's up to you. I don't, I don't mind either way. Okay, so well, spinach is cooling and the artichokes are you know, kind of draining. We got some cream cheese here, which is one of my favorite things in the whole world. If I didn't care about living, I could easily sit down and eat a whole block of this, which I know sounds disgusting. It is, but I would totally do it. Okay. So we need about a cup of... Is it a cup? Is it... Where did it go? One cup of cream cheese. Yes. 
I have a bowl. I have a bowl. So, so this looks like it's about. Uh, so we're gonna use this whole block because I'm pretty sure one block is a cup. Now, I didn't say this on the instructions, uh, and I should have. This is room temperature. Uh, if you're trying to work with fridge temperature, cream cheese, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. Um, oh, Wendy, sorry, if the artichokes are just marinating in olive oil, that's fine. Um, so I let this come to room temperature before I did anything to it, okay? Now to this, we are going to add uh, some sour cream. Now, I said full fat sour cream, and it's very important that you don't use low fat stuff in this. Uh, for those of you who are watching, hello Brian, for those of you who are watching the chowder episode a few weeks ago, when we did the seafood chowder, um, it's the same principle. If you use low fat things, it's going to split in the oven and you'll end up with like a really gross looking dip, which we don't want because we are going to bake this. It's a warm dip. So it's really important that you use full fat ingredients. Now I don't think we're going to need all of this sour cream, so I'm only going to put about half of it in here. Yeah, that's good. Okay, what else? We're also going to need about a third of a cup of mayonnaise. Now, if you are a Miracle Whip person, I'm sorry for you, but you can use Miracle Whip instead of mayonnaise. I only say that because when I was a kid, we always had Miracle, well, we didn't need a Miracle Whip. We had this giant tub of salad dressing, which was disgusting. Um, so, we, uh, I don't, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like Miracle Whip. Sorry, I got distracted by a comment. Uh, okay, so onions, I'll stir them again. Give that a stir, give that a stir. They're looking perfect. And we're just going to let that go. Our balsamic is starting to steam. When you smell vinegar, don't put your face over it. Just you know, waft it into your nose because you will mess your sinuses up pretty good. So all we want to do is just kind of mix these things together. Our mayonnaise and our cream cheese. You can do this in a mixer. You can do this in a food processor. Um, but on the show, I like to do things by hand. Well, in real life, I like to do things by hand too. Uh, but this way, like if you don't have one of those pieces of equipment, you can still make it, right? Uh, just gonna grab a wooden spoon and beat this up. And you can see. I mean, you can't. It's just all white. You can't really see anything, but that's okay. Sounds pretty gross though. That kind of slopping sound. So we'll set that aside. Next step, artichokes. So I just want to give them a little squeeze, and get out any excess liquid that's in here. Yeah, Wendy says every great dip, the secret is sour cream, cream cheese, and mayonnaise, and that is not wrong. Okay, and all we're going to do is just kind of rough chop these. And you might hit some of these coarser outer leaves that you can't cut through. Just get rid of them. Again, you can do this in a food processor or whatever you want, but I'm doing it by hand. <laughs> oh, I think you're right, Steve. So you don't have to cut this too small, but you don't want, like when you dip into this, you don't want a piece of artichoke that big. Right? 
that's not enjoyable. Okay, so artichokes in. And that's just one can of artichokes. Stir our onions. And now, get rid of this, our spinach. So, I'm going to just squeeze this out. So you can see not too much liquid's coming out. If you didn't heat your pan up properly, way more liquid will come out of this. So the key really is a very hot pan. And again, same with the artichokes, we're just going to chop this up. And at the end of it, this is about a half cup, or yeah, about a half cup of cooked spinach. And you can use you know, frozen cooked spinach if you want, just make sure you drain it very, very well. Okay. And we also need to put a pile of Parmesan cheese in. Because why not? So we're going to grate about a cup and a half of parm in here. I didn't say these were healthy hors d'oeuvres, I just said they were hors d'oeuvres. Now, I highly recommend you don't use the powdered craft, you know, stuff that you get on the shelf in the grocery store. Use good quality parm for this. You're putting in all this work, make it worthwhile, right? I think some of you have heard my rants on that stuff before, so I'm not going to get into it, but I'm just, don't, don't use that for this. So we grate, we grate, we grate. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Now we're going to mix this all in here. And I gotta say, this looks pretty good. See, look how nice that looks. And give it a little taste. Delicious. Why did you just ask me who eats all the food I make? Uh, usually my wife and I. Um, if there's a guest, then they eat it as well. Um, but tonight, because I'm using puff pastry and I can't eat puff pastry, I'm actually uh, taking it. So uh, every Monday night, my wife and I actually have like a self-defense class after this. It's just something fun that we do together. And so I'm taking all the leftovers there tonight because I can't eat half of it. Okay, so I just added a bit of salt and pepper in here. My onions, I can hear them. They're cooking. I'm sizzling, so I want to make sure I'm stirring them a little more often. And now, I'm going to take this artichoke dip. And I got these beautiful little cast iron enamel dishes. And I'm just going to put this in here. Uh, Wendy, I think that sounds delicious. She said she would make a grilled cheese with this on a really nice sourdough. I think that sounds really good. So we just want to make sure we don't waste any of this.
And I'm just going to take a spoon and kind of smooth it out a little. Then we're going to put some more Parmesan cheese on right over the top. And this is going to give it a nice crust when it bakes. Now, I'm actually only going to bake one of these right now. I'm going to save the other one for tomorrow. bake this it's probably going to bubble over. I'm going to put it on this pan. I'm going to pop it in the oven. I'm going to let that cook for about 15 minutes. Okay? And I'm just going to wipe my board off here. And then we're going to move back onto the pommiers. So it's all cleaned up. So next week, uh, we're doing Christmas baking, and I have two very special guests. I don't know if I said this last week or not. Uh, I have two very special guests. My two big sisters are going to be on the show, and my guess is they're just going to torture me for the whole time. So it will be should be pretty fun to watch. Uh, and yeah, we'll be doing some baking, which isn't my favorite thing to do, but they're both very good at it and enjoy it. So we'll teach you a few things. Okay, do I ever use Grana Padano? That's what that was. That was Grana Padano cheese. Um, or no, sorry, that was Parmigiano Reggiano. I do use Grana Padano somewhere, sometimes, but it's hard to find here. Uh, but in most of, like in the Italian restaurants I've worked in, that's what we always use. Okay, palmiers. So, palmiers out of the fridge. I'm just going to open this up. Beautiful. We're we'll going to take one of our sheet pans here. And we're just going to put a layer of parchment paper down. And now, these don't look like much right now, but when they cook, they're going to pop right up. I'm sorry, I forgot to egg wash the top. That's okay. Oh my god. This is not going well for me today. So you just have to be pretty careful when you're cutting them, you don't want them to fall apart on you. <laughs> these, 
These are not the prettiest pommies I've ever made, if I'm being completely honest. But that's okay. That's why we do this live. Because you know what? Things don't always work out, and it's important to see that aspect of it as well. I know some people like to freeze them before they cut them, and that might be an idea to try if you do these at home. Uh, they might may hold together a little better if you do. But that's it. They're still going to pop up nice, and they're still going to look really good. So we're just going to spread these out on the pan. Just like this. Oh my god, they're sticking to me. Guys, this is the... I was gonna... I was thinking about adding these to my hors d'oeuvres list for dinner parties that I do, and I think I'm not gonna do that now. Okay, we're almost through these things. Thank the Lord. We're almost through the palm leaves. Okay. That's done. Let's pop in the oven. As you can see, they're not very pretty, but hopefully once they're done, they'll look a little better. Uh, so I actually want to put these on the top rack, or like on the middle. So I'm going to move the artichoke down a little bit. I'm going to pop this guy in here. And we're going to set a 15 minute timer. Okay. Now the onions are coming along beautifully. Let's take a look at our balsamic. Let's get this out of the way. So, it's not very thick yet, but what we want is we have our spoon here. We want to run our finger across. Now, I don't know if you can see in that much detail, but there was a line that stayed there, which is good, but the balsamic ran into the line. So we know it's done when the balsamic doesn't run into that line, when it just stays, okay? So we'll put that back on the heat. It's close, but it's not quite there. And our onions are gonna close too, which is very exciting. There are a few things in this world more delicious than caramelized onions. Very, very simple, but it is a fantastic, fantastic uh, little treat. Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff going on. There's one thing we haven't done anything with yet, and that is the smoked salmon uh, on sesame crackers. So I'm just going to get the smoked salmon out of the fridge. And then we can get going. So smoked salmon, we'll just open this up. 
Uh, and this is cold smoked salmon. It's definitely preferable to use cold smoked for this over hot smoked. The difference being that hot smoked is more cooked than cold smoked. So we have, oh, I don't mind if I do. We have this delicious smoked salmon and we're just gonna cut it up as fine as we can. Not it's like you don't have to puree it, but we want like, we still want some texture, but we also want it nice and small. Just so you know what I mean, that's kind of the texture I'm going for. Okay? And we're just going to pop this right in this bowl. wipe down. It, it's funny you say that. So Sue says salmon on everything. Uh, my wife and I actually had smoked salmon eggs benedict for lunch today. So with the onions you can see that they're starting to turn colors. Some of the bits on the bottom are starting to brown up nice, so make sure you get in all the corners, all the edges of the pan. Make sure you give everything a stir so that they all kind of uniformly get that caramelization. And now back to the same. So we're going to take two green onions. If there's any kind of off pitch, pull them off. Just give these a rinse. And then we're just going to cut off the very, very end. Like that is all you should lose on your green onion, other than the very tip of the greens too. Uh, and now I'm going to take this, so just this kind of bottom part, and I'm going to cut it in half lengthwise. I'm going to do the same with the other one. And we're going to cut these as thin as we can. And for this, I really do mean thin, 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 thin. in here and now these ones we're just going to leave cold because they're softer than the bottom parts chop 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 now we're just going to lose this little bit at the end right in okay now we're going to take our microplane, as it's called. I'm going to call that balsamic reduction finished. It's done. It's done. Oh, this pommy is actually look really good. So that's good news. Now we're going to take some ginger. Peel. Yes, yeah, so I'm doing this with a spoon, and the reason being that it's actually a lot easier to peel ginger with a spoon, and you lose a lot less of it than you do when you use a knife or a peeler. It just kind of rips the skin right off it. Okay. I want this super fine, that's why I'm using the grater instead of chopping it. Nice and fine. 
Okay, we want about a teaspoon of grated ginger in there, ideally. We'll rinse this off because we'll need that in a second. Let's just take a second and check our artichoke dip and make sure that's okay. Okay. It's starting to bubble, so it's only got a couple more minutes. It looks really good. I'm really excited for that. Because I can eat that. Uh, okay, so we have some soy sauce I'm using. Um, Tamari, which is just gluten-free soy sauce, you can use regular soy sauce. And I'm just going to add about a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more, maybe a tablespoon and a half in here. And about the same in sesame oil as well. We're going to take some sesame seeds. Uh, about two teaspoons of sesame seeds. We're going to mix this up. Now, uh, you could add a spicy element in here as well, like a, a little bit of chili, a little bit of sambal, something like that. A little bit of heat would be really nice. Oh, this smells absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. That's it. Okay, onions are getting really close now. So once, once most of the moisture's cooked out of them, uh, and they start to caramelize, then things start to happen pretty quickly. So we just go stir them up, and they're really, really close. So, for this guy, let's plate this up. So I have these sesame crackers. Uh, that is true. Uh, Sue said that ginger uh, freezes well uh, and then you can grate it. Absolutely. Um, I have a bunch in my freezer right now because Superstore started packaging their ginger together. They used to just have it loose and you could just break off what you needed. But now they package it together, which is very annoying. They have a pile, a pile of ginger. Um, so freezing it works very, very well for that. So we're just going to put these crackers down. I'm going to make sure this is well mixed. And then we're going to put a nice big dollop of this on each cracker. Now this is a fantastic hors d'oeuvre. I love this. I actually use this um, on my menus. Uh, and it's really simple. It's so simple to throw together. Now it's just something a little different with smoked salmon than just having like a smoked salmon plate out or something. Okay, so we have these. And now what we can do is just take the green part of a piece of green onion and give it a little wash. I'll set this aside. Cut it in half so it's just that big. Cut it in half again and just Flatten it out. And we have these nice, really nice green onion threads. And just pop one on each one of these.
And here we go. So this is our sesame smoked salmon on a sesame cracker. Simple, beautiful, and delicious. Okay. My shoes on tight, give me a sec. That is so good. Okay. Next step is we're going to get that other puff pastry out of the fridge. I'm just going to open it up. Um, yes, Wendy, chives will work. Thank you, Jack. Hello. Uh, Krista. The reason I have those knife skills is because I have worked with a knife in my hand for almost 20 years every day. So it just takes a lot of practice. But there's no reason why you can't get them to. So we're just going to take our puff pastry, flatten it out a little bit, and we're just going to take the tip of our knife. We're just doing this because we're gonna bake this. So that what I just did is called docking. It's very common with like pie crust or pizza crust. And what we're doing, we're poking holes in it so that it doesn't puff up too much because we're gonna dry bread bake this for about 10 minutes before we put the onions on it because the onions and the cheese will burn by the time the puff pastry is cooked. So that's why we're doing that. Now in the meantime, let's get our artichoke dip out of here. We're going to pop this guy in. Now, this looks beautiful, but the, the parm isn't really crispy because I would normally throw that onto the broiler for a second once it was done, but I have other stuff in the oven so I can't broil it. So, I'll be right back. We're going to do something else. So if you're, if you're doing this at home, I suggest you broil it, but since I can't use my broiler right now, and this looks absolutely incredible, I'm going to torch it just to get that nice kind of caramelized cheese, nice and crisp on the top. Oh my god. Guys, you cannot tell me that doesn't look amazing. So what we'll do... If you can't eat wheat, uh, Breton, or Dare, makes an incredible uh, gluten-free cracker. They have four different kinds. Uh, it's that and the, the sesame crackers are the only crackers I've ever eaten. Oh, I can't get into it. I'm just going to spread these guys out here. 
this is like this is really great not just for like a uh, cocktail party but this is great for a dinner party too have as the kind of appetizer and have set out and then you just this is gonna be so hot guys I mean come on look how beautiful that is gorgeous texture smells amazing but I'm gonna give that a second before I dig in because it's gonna be so hot now the onions everything's coming together guys the onions are almost there they look beautiful they smell beautiful yep perfect and now the palm leaves. Let's check these guys out. So, I mean, you can see those look way better than when they went in. They're not quite done, so we're going to pop those back in there. But that's okay. Uh, and I have here, so I actually, these salmon, these guys, I actually made at a party the other day. And what I do at the party, just to kind of up it a little bit, is I make a wasabi mayonnaise, so it's, it's just wasabi paste mixed with mayonnaise until I like the taste of it. And then I just put the tiniest little dollop on here. And it just adds a little bit of spicy element. And it's absolutely delicious. I could eat these all day. And actually, once you get the wasabi on there, it kind of has like a sushi taste, which is fine by me. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like a de let's call it let's call it a deconstructed sushi. If you want to get really crazy, you can put it on a rice cracker and call it a deconstructed sushi, but those are super delicious. Okay. Let's try this artichoke dip. Mmm. That's really good. That was really, really, really good. So, the artichoke dip is two cups of grated Parmesan, a cup and a half in it, and then another half cup on top. Uh, about half a cup of cooked spinach, chopped up. One can of artichoke hearts, drained and chopped up. Half a container of, half a small container of full fat sour cream. You've got uh, one cup of full fat cream cheese, you got a third of a cup of mayo, and you've got absolutely delicious. It's really, like, I'm, not, I'm not even exaggerating, this is so good. But it's really hot. Ah. Does anybody have any questions while we're waiting a few minutes here? It's burning. Ah. Um, this was a gift uh, a couple years ago. It came with came with like some ramekins and stuff. I think it's from Stokes. Um, I might be wrong. Honestly. Don't buy this. Go to Canadian Tire and get, yeah, Laura, you're not kidding, that's super hot. Go to Canadian Tire and get like a real blowtorch, like, uh, like a, uh, like something you would, I don't even know how to explain it, like a real blowtorch. It'll just be the top, it'll come out and you just get these bottles that you screwed on. 
Get that. These are garbage. They're garbage. Garbage. Now, I've yet to see a really good one. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's for creme brulee as well. But, just because it's for one thing doesn't mean you can't use it for other things. Um, also, I find that the butane for these things are hard to find. That's why I prefer the regular torches, but somebody gave me this, so that's why I have it. Yeah, I, it's, Danielle, you're not, like, I, I'm not exaggerating how hot that was. It was, my mouth is burnt. Burnt, I tells you. Okay. What do we got going on? So these little guys, these little guys are done. They are done like dinner. So, as you can see, oh, they're beautiful. See that? See that little guy? It's hot, nice and crispy on the bottom, nice and crisp, not soggy. That's what you want. Now, you can't eat these, so I'm not going to, but you get the idea. And then you, can, you just spread them out on one of these beautiful Ashworks cutting board boards. Now, I have no room anywhere. I'm just making a giant mess. I got stuff all over the place. This is ridiculous. I'm not doing a very good job today, guys. Last night, my wife and I went to see Bohemian Rhapsody, the Queen movie. And I had a big Coke at the movie, and then I came home and I couldn't sleep. I was up till like 2.30 in the morning. I'm usually usually awake at 5, 5.30. So that was a very late night for me. And then today has not been a good day because of that. So we're just going to take these little guys. These little guys, we'll put them on this board. I don't know why I have this on. And then, you know, you feed them to your guests. And they love you forever. And these can be done... Um, uh, these can be done ahead, they freeze very well, and you just kind of let them cool and serve to room temperature. You can roll it and put it in the fridge overnight and then bake it right before your guests get in. There's all kinds of options with these. Um, and honestly, like I wish I could eat one because they're really, really delicious. But I'll get very sick if I do, so I'm not going to. But there you go. So, and I mean, we could jazz this up a little bit with time sprigs and what have you. you know, whatever you want beautiful easy right easy 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 all we did for this if you're just tuning in or you want to make this at home is we took puff pastry we rubbed it with egg we sprinkled it with cheese uh, we did cheddar and we did parm we added some fresh thyme to it, a little bit of salt and pepper we rolled it up chilled it in the fridge for 15 20 minutes cut them up put them on parchment lined baking sheet and bake them in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And they look absolutely amazing. Hold on, I'm going to see if I have a taster. Suze? You want to come taste something? No. I've asked my wife to come and taste something. She was just working out, so she looks a little haggard, but she has to come on camera if she wants to eat this. I look haggard? A little bit. <laughs> You're lucky you have food. <laughs> it's hot. It's good? It's good. Am I in them? I can't tell them. No, it's it's because there's a delay. There you go. Yeah. See? See <laughs> it's delicious. Yeah. You want to try that? Mm-hmm. Next. Oh, so these look really cute. So this is really, really, really hot, obviously. So please be careful. Get cool over here, get this shot. I'll put the cracker in the shot. Hey, everybody say hi to Suze. Suze, say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. I'm usually not this sweaty. <laughs> I swear. It's good. Because it's also delicious. Yeah. So I really like that. Yeah, me too. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. How about that one? Go for it. <laughs> Is it smoked salmon? Yeah. Oh, I can't juggle all these crackers. My life is so hard. 
Well, she's eating. I'm going to take out this other puff pastry. You can see how it puffed up, but if we hadn't docked it, it would have puffed up even more. And we don't want to cook it all the way through. We're just kind of power cooking it. Can you tell the people about that one? I really like the smoked salmon one. Which mm -hmm. one's your favorite? Uh, the... I think the smoked salmon one, yeah. actually. Yeah. Which I wasn't, like, because, I mean, anything with cheese usually is my heart thing. But what is that? I wasn't watching. So this is smoked salmon with ginger, soy, sesame. Um, yeah. And then there's a little bit of wasabi meal on top. Cool. Yeah. I'm take one more. Go for, for it. Two. Bye, Facebook. <laughs> okay, so we have our puff pastry here. And all we're going to do, well, let's move around. We're going to move around for a sec here. Okay. Puff pastry. Onions. This works really well with mushrooms too. You can steal them in the middle. Um, and you can use the same cheese, same principle, just kind of roast the mushrooms off. Um, spread them out, a little bit of fresh herbs, cheese on top. So just spread the onions out. Make sure you cover the whole pastry because you don't want like, you don't want to waste any, any right? I don't know why, but I couldn't see all these comments. Thank you everybody for saying hi. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, Wendy, this would be really good with cream bleaks. Um, like I said, mushrooms of any kind. Uh, all kinds of things. Even like, you can even do like a ham and Swiss one. Anything. And it's so simple. You really, you're just pre-baking the, the puff pastry, adding your cheese. So I have Gruyere here, which is like a Swiss cheese. Very, very delicious Swiss cheese. And we're just gonna grate this on. Um, yeah, and that's that's what I love about this. Same with the palmiers. Like, they're so easy, and you can put anything in there. Um, just don't get discouraged when they look weird when you cut them, because they come out much nicer. Uh, but yeah, so anything like this, it, it's very, very simple to do, but the wow factor is there. Like, it's, like if you present these to your guests, you know, there's, there's definitely a wow factor to that. They look so good. And you just throw them on the floor like I just did, and, you know. Um, but anything like this, even like the dip, the sesame, sesame crackers, none of this stuff is complicated, and it really shouldn't be. And all of this you can kind of have done ahead. So, we have our cheese, and now we're just going to take a little bit of time, and we're just going to sprinkle some leaves over this. Oh, it smells so good. Onions, <clears throat> caramelized onions and thyme are like the perfect combination. Now, because we didn't season the onions when we were cooking them, we are going to have to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. But not too much salt because the gruyere is already salty. Oh, Wendy says that gruyere is the most expensive cheese where she is. You're in Wisconsin or Detroit? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Um, honestly, I buy it at Costco and it's, you get a giant block of it for a decent price. So just like that, back in the oven. For another 10 minutes or so. I'm going to pick up the pommier that I threw on the ground. Throw it in the compost. And I'm going to snack while we wait. So I mean, 
Like I was saying, the idea here is that this is all fairly simple stuff. When you have guests over, you don't want to spend all night in the kitchen. You want you know, time. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't just be eating while I'm talking to you. Now, what else? So, while those are in there, and they're only going to be a couple of minutes, um, like I said in the beginning of the show, next week we have two very, very special guests, my two big sisters, Christy and Cassie, um, and we're going to do some Christmas. You can grab some more if you want. She's back for more. Everybody, I didn't see, but everybody was saying hi to you. Oh, hi. Oh, really? There's a whole bunch of people saying hi to you. Your dad's Krista, here, too. Barb. Hi, Dad. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve asks, how can someone book me for a lesson or an event? Thanks, Steve. Um, you can go to chefbenkelly.com or you can message me on Facebook. And I teach private cooking classes that come right to your house. And I teach you to cook whatever you want, or I, you know, come to your house and do a dinner party, like make this stuff for a full dinner or whatever you want. And if you don't know what You're to get someone camera. for, and if you don't know what to get someone for Christmas because they already have everything, you get them a cooking lesson with men. You can. You, you can do like a couples cooking lesson. You can absolutely. I do single people. I do couples. Whatever you want, uh, and you can even get gift cards on my website. Thank you, Suze, for <laughs> making me remember that. <laughs> Um, yeah. We're just waiting now. This is kind of awkward. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah. Donna, Sue said it was a great idea. Donna said it was a great idea, Sue. Um, I was out Christmas shopping today, so it's fresh on my mind. That makes sense. might be what people are thinking about. Newfoundland, I don't go to Newfoundland. Well, I mean, if you want to fly me to Newfoundland, I'll go to Newfoundland. I don't mind. <laughs> Uh, no, I will go, like, I, I go all over kind of mainland Nova Scotia. Usually my limit's, like, within two hours of the city, but, I mean, I'd probably have to charge you a little extra, but I'll go anywhere. Uh, oh, yes, and Chef Ben Kelly cutting boards will be ready soon, so they're going to have my, my beautiful face on them. Um... <laughs> Ashworks has logo on them. They're going to be beautiful. I'm really excited. Those will be very soon. You'll be able to buy those on the website. Um, yeah, the beautiful Ashworks cutting boards. They're going to... Can I say what they are or are we waiting? I don't know if I can say what they are. We'll wait. We'll wait to say... To, to kind of have the full reveal of them. Uh, Daniel, I, I've done that before. Like, I've been hired for bachelorette parties and stuff, and it's always a lot of fun. Um, and bachelor. And, and bachelor parties. All kinds of stuff, and like uh, sometimes it's a dinner, sometimes it's a cooking class, sometimes it's kind of like a combination. It's all kinds of fun stuff. And I'm open to pretty much anything. This still needs another minute. Uh, what else? I have a question. My wife has a question. Yes. You look nervous or annoyed. What? Um, what's like your favorite? What so far has been your like favorite? Either like dinner party thing that you've made food wise or like cooking lesson food that you've made. Or what like really stands out. So I don't know if you just heard her. She asked me what my favorite cooking class thing or my favorite dinner party thing I've made has been. Mm. I don't know. It's hard to choose because I've done a lot of them. Um, I did a Halloween themed class which I thought was, or uh, dinner party which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, we did like a smoked pumpkin risotto, and I did, uh, I roasted a whole head of cauliflower and made it look like brains, and then did a black bean hummus with it, so it looked really weird. Uh, what else did I do? I did the black mirror cake for that. Yeah, that one was a lot of fun. I like that one because I got to try the first black mirror cake when he was testing the recipe. They can't really hear you if you're not on the oh, camera. You can tell them what I said. She said she really enjoyed the cake. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Steve said I might need a sous chef for a girl's cooking night and I should pick him. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know if Donna would be happy with that. 
Um, okay, and so like I said, for next year, so we only have two, I think two episodes left before the end of the year. So we have next week we're doing baking, the week after we're doing, um, uh, I've never had to wear a French maid uniform, but I have had to wear weird hats. Um, Oh, they said they can't hear you, Suze. I'm sorry. Uh, what is it? So, yeah, we only have two episodes left before the end of the year. So next week is baking. Week after is Christmas brunch. And then we're done for the year. And then when I come back in the new year, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off. I'm going to come back to the new year. And I'm going to start bringing on more guests. And I'm going to teach the guests how to cook, which will hopefully kind of slow down the cooking process so you guys can easier have, a, have an easier time cooking along at home because that really is the whole idea of the show and yeah but I'm really glad that you guys are watching and you know interacting and stuff that makes me happy too okay let's check this onion tart so we know it's done when the bottom of the pastry is golden this one isn't quite there yet unfortunately but it's getting very, very, very close. The last thing in the world you want to feed your guests is undercooked puff pastry. So take the, take the extra couple of minutes and make sure it's done. Um, because undercooked puff pastry is gross. It's really gummy. It's just not a good time at all. Yeah. You can hear voices outside. That's not good. Uh, yes, the oven is on 400. Um, you can cook this on a higher temperature, 425, even 450, uh, but I needed the oven at a lower temperature for the other stuff I was cooking. So that's why. And I could crank it now, but by the time the oven heats up, it would have been done anyway, so it's kind of pointless. Uh, yeah, but what we can do is get another beautiful Ashworks cutting board out and get ready to plate these. And I'll show you the balsamic bone here as well. Uh, So you can see like it's already, it's thickened up, it's cooled a little bit, it's beautiful. Um, and if I take the spoon and I run my finger across, it stays. And it tastes amazing. And this is just sugar and vinegar. So it's going to store for a very long time. Just put it in a sealed container, put it in your fridge, it'll last forever. And then when you want to use it, just take it out like half an hour before you want to use it, let it come to room temperature, and then you're good to go. And honestly, I don't even keep it in the fridge, but I would suggest. Wendy, you're right, I do have a beautiful collection of cutting boards, and I have Ashworks to thank you, to thank for that, so thank you, Donna and Steve, I seriously appreciate it. Yep, that's right, Wendy. You could use leeks instead, or just about anything. That's the great thing about puff pastry, is you can really just kind of throw anything into it, and it's delicious. Oh, and next week, actually, I should say uh, what we're making, because I know two of the things, I think. My sisters um, have been having trouble trying to figure out what they want to make for this, so this might change. But as of right now, I know one of my sisters wants to make... Uh, apricot and feta phyllo packages. I don't know what she's calling them. Something, something with phyllo dough, apricot, and uh, feta. So that'll be very delicious. And if you've never used phyllo dough before, it'll be a great opportunity to kind of see how to use it and get a get an idea of like what could go wrong with it and what won't go wrong. And then my other sister wants to make. These sesame cookies, they're like thumbprint cookies, they have raspberry jam in them, and they have sesame seeds. They're very delicious. And I haven't decided what I'm going to make yet, because I've been too busy worrying about what my sisters are going to make. So I should probably f figure that out. Um, are the chefs as well? What? I don't understand. Oh, are my sister chefs? No. Um, actually, one of them worked as a cook for a very long time. Um, but she is not a cook anymore. And the other one owns her own small business. Um, she works, she has a customer 
relations company, her and her husband. Yeah. So they'll be here, and there. It's gonna if if you enjoy if you can imagine enjoying seeing me get picked on. Next week is the episode you are gonna want to watch because they're gonna pick on me a lot. Um, yeah, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm actually very very excited for it. Uh, and like I said, I'm gonna have more guests on. Uh, and some at some point, my wife will be a guest on the show. At some point in the new year, I'll probably have Steve and Donna back at some point. Maybe there will be some giveaways, and the people who win will get a chance to come on the show and get a free cooking lesson right here in my kitchen. So there's all kinds of new things happening in the new year. I'm super excited. This war cake is not one of them. Crackers with dip. Hmm. I don't understand, Laura. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Donna, you're not. You're gonna want to watch it afterwards because I, I feel like it's gonna be a very funny episode. Okay, there we go. This is done. This looks amazing. So, if I lift this up here, it's nice and browned on the bottom. I hope you can see that. I don't want to fold it over too much. And I'm not putting this directly on the cutting board. I have this lovely trivet. Now we're gonna take our balsamic. We're just gonna drizzle this over. Ideally, the balsamic should be cooler. Uh, kind of like room temperature, but it's not the end of the world if it's not. And this stuff, you can make this stuff, this goes on anything. This is fantastic on scallops, it's fantastic on pork, it's fantastic, you know, just drizzled over cheese, it's fantastic on so many things. So you make this, it's, it's not just something you gotta wait till you make this again. You can use this for a lot of different things. You can just pull pork, you throw it in pulled pork, anything, anything at all. Uh, oh, I see. So, let's pop this out of here. I feel like I've completely destroyed my kitchen this evening, but that's okay. Oh, you heard that. My wife is mocking me in the back. Um, so, what we're going to do is cut these and a nice rectangles and then we'll cut them into nice squares wife I have something else for you to try That's the only way to get her to run. It's the only way. <laughs> They're very, very, very hot. Oh. This is what you, you've been waiting for this one, haven't you? Yeah. I haven't tried this, but I've heard good things. It's burning hot, though. Yeah. This is cruel. So this is another one that I do at parties sometimes. Because I think it's delicious. Oh, my God. It's good, right? Oh, it's so good. You know, and then simple and delicious, everybody. There you I go. I don't know if you can see. Oops. They can see. So I have to like wait. <laughs> so there you go. Very very simple. Um, you know, but when you eat this, it does not seem simple. It seems like a very complex dish. And if you really wanted, you could turn this into these too. But I recommend you try this. And all it is is puff pastry with caramelized onions, grated cheese, and a little bit of thyme, and then it's baked. Uh, Alright guys, that is the end of this show for tonight. Thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for all the interactions. Uh, actually, if you could do me one favor and just right below me, kind of like right down here, there's a button that says share. If you could push that, it would mean the world to me. Uh, other than that, I'll be back next week with my two big sisters torturing me for the entirety of the show. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Happy to help out. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.